Hey guys, welcome back to the course. In the last episode, we looked at getting component and also modifying a little bit of values in there. So modifying, say, the light intensity, modifying the position of a transform. Today, we're going to be all about that transform component. We're going to be looking at the transform component. Um, there's going to be a new field type introduced, the vector 3. And we're going to be playing with just moving stuff around, right? So just uh, basic stuff you see in video games in general. So you're just moving stuff around the scene. So let's have a look at our current scene. We have the basic setup we have in our code in my very first script. We have this information here. I'm going to get rid of pretty much everything but my transform. Since we don't really want to mess around with anything else but the transform today, right? So getting rid of that as well. And we end up with a fresh script that has a reference towards its own transform. In this case, it's only looking at the, um, the cube transform. Because my transform is equal to get component transform and since the script is on top of a cube, it grabs this very transform here. Now, if you notice up here, we also have the position, the rotation, and the scale, but those are represented in some other kind of values. It's not just typical int or float like we saw. It's actually a group of three different floats. So we can say 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5. But as you can tell, the position itself is not just a single float, it's a group of three float, and that is exactly what a vector 3 is. Now in broad, that's pretty much what it is, it's just a group of three floats. However, if you just go a little bit deeper, you're going to find out that it's more than just that, you can do a lot of operation on it, you can have a lot of um, other class helping you calculate stuff, but if you just want to have like a basic description of what a vector 3 is, and we can type it right here, vector 3, it's a simple three float align one next to the other and they're defined as x y and z so i went back inside of my code and i've created a vector that is called direction and just for the purpose of looking at this i'm going to turn this into a public field this way in my script up here and as you can tell we have a x y and a z now let's just say that x is going to equal to one and uh, just leave it at that so right now direction is equal to one zero zero if we just try to take our position and add this up, so if we just go up here, look at our position. Our position is currently 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5. If we do position plus direction, we're going to end up with having 3.5, 2.5, and 2.5. So as you can tell, we're able to just add this up. Just like we did earlier, we're able to have some really basic mathematical operation on vectors as well. So we can say direction is say equal and then you declare a new vector 3 so let's write this one new vector 3 and we'll come back to uh, why i wrote new in front of that in a moment uh say 0 1 0 so this way we say direction which is equal to 1 0 0 is now equal to 0 1 0 so we're just overriding that value now if we have a look right here we have 1 0 0 and as soon as we start the game it said 0 1 0 because the value has changed at the start, so we're running this, and the value changes. If we do a plus equal on this, then we get 1, 0, 0 is plus equal to 0, 1, 0, which end up being 1, 1, 0. So the plus equal works here as well, the minus equal also works. Now the plus plus doesn't work here because it doesn't really know what to add this up to, so a plus plus is not going to work, but plus equal is, and minus equal is. When you're adding up like two vectors, as you can tell, it's really simple. You just take the x component of the first vector, the x component of the second one, and you just add them up together. Same thing for y and z. And if you do it uh, with a minus equal, same exact thing. So you can manually just assign a direction. Quit. <coughs> so you can manually just quit. So you can manually just assign a vector 3 the same exact way we've done a second ago. So you can say direction is equal to a new vector 3, and then you just give it a direction. Say you wanted your, um, your object to go diagonal right, going upward. So you would say 1 in x, 1 in uh, y, and 0 in z. It's not moving back and forth. It's actually just moving on the right-hand side and on you know, the top axis as well. So it's going in diagonal top right. Okay, so now we define a vector 3, we just assign value to it. Let's actually use it on the transform component. If we have a look at my transform component, we have the position, the scale, and the rotation. At least that's what we see through the inspector. 
So if we see it through the inspector, we are at least supposed to be able to modify it in the code as well. So I'm going to have a look at the update down here and say uh, my transform.position is going to equal direction. If I do that, then every single frame is going to say, okay, so position, which is up here, this transform.position is equal to direction. As you can tell, if we just have a look in the scene view, my game is currently running. It just placed my object here and I can't really move it. Well, I do move it, but every single frame, so 60 times a second, if I'm running at 60 FPS, it's going to move it back to where direction is. Now, direction is also public in this case, so I could be moving it here as well. And as you can tell, we get a reflection in the transform as well, because transform the position, these lines here, these three floats, are always going to be equal to direction. And the reason is because we have this call right here that says my position is equal to direction. Now let's go with what we've learned a little bit earlier. We can actually do a plus equal in this. So my position is plus equal direction, which means it's going to just start where it is right now. And then every single frame is going to take its current position. So in this case, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. And every single frame is going to add one, one, zero to it. And the reason it's one, one and not one, zero, zero right here is because we redefine um, direction on the very first line. So let's try this out and have a look at how fast this goes. As you can tell, our cube is now gone. It's really going far up. And the reason you can actually tell that is by looking at the transform up here. So if you just have a look at the transform, so without even seeing your cube fly up, you know that it's flying up because the position in X and position in Y is moving. Now, when something is moving that fast, you can't really see it. Uh, what you can do is double click on it and it's going to go at its position but now it keeps moving so what you can do is hold F and it's going to snap to it and it's a little bit glitchy sometimes when you're rotating around but as you can tell it's moving away from the board and it's just gaining gaining height so every single frame we do your current position is plus equal to direction and it's moving towards the direction we assign now let's just do um, let's just decrease that direction to say zero it's no longer going up in Y. If we do minus two, it's gonna fall twice as fast. So if we're running at 60 frames per second, it's basically going to fall down at um, 120 meters a second. So here we have it. Our cube is just moving using the direction we gave him. Right, so now that we've done that, um, let's actually look at the other one. Let's look at the scale first. If we do local scale is plus equal to say a new vector 3, 0 0.1f, 0 0.1f, and 0.1f, then every single frame you're going to take the current scale you currently have and you're going to do well plus equal 0 0.1. So after one frame this is going to be equal to 1.1, 1.1, and then 1.1. Let's have a look in the game what this gives us. We're just growing a cube up like that quite fast again. But this is basically how we modify the values. So as you could tell, we grab our transform component. So we grab this thing and in the update, we just keep modifying it every single frame. And that is going to be pretty much it for this video, guys. I have another video on Vector3 if you want to check it out, if you want to have some more information about what you can do exactly with Vector3. I'm going to link this uh, right now on the screen. So uh, just click on the screen if you want to have some more information about the Vector3. Or if you feel that's enough information for you to go on, and to be honest, that pretty much it, that that's pretty much it. So vector three is three floats basically. Then just move on to the next video on the course, and we can go from there. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at conditions, and we do this so we get ready for the actual keyboard input. So when we press on the keys, something happens. If we don't press on it, something else happens. Um, this is what we actually do in the next episode. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this, if you just want to support me making free courses, uh, same thing, you just leave a like on the video, you leave a comment, this also helps. Or you can also support this course, my next course, and um, pretty much everything I do here on the channel, everything I work on, using the Patreon page. You can sign up there, the links are in the description. And uh, that's pretty much it guys, so again, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.